Hey guys, what's up? Kurt Hughes here with Ignite Baseball. We're taking a look at Barry Vaughn's swing, arguably one of the best hitters of all time. Going to get right into it and just talk about a couple of the positions and transitions he gets into here in a swing. So we'll take a look at his forward move. So one of the things that all hitters do is that during the loading phase of their swing, their pelvis slides just a little bit forward. It doesn't need to be like a lot forward, so it doesn't need to go all the way to like the end of this red mark but it does need to go a little bit forward. So if I were to draw a line right up here next to the back leg, so if I go, here's a line right there, make it 90 degrees, so it's straight up and down, you'll see that pelvis slides a little bit away from that line. And what that allows us to do as hitters is that once our rotation begins, it allows our front foot to get weighted really quickly, so that way we have the ability to create quite a bit of ground force with that front leg. So that way we can use that to help um, drive our rotation and you know the speed of our barrel coming through the zone. Another thing that you're gonna notice about Bonds is that he really does a nice job, or really did a nice job, of creating a length across his core. And our core is a really interesting thing in that it has different layers. So one layer of our core has muscles that run diagonally so they run like from hip to shoulder not exactly it's kind of like hips to kind of like around the side of the rib cage but to simplify let's just say hip to shoulder but then there's also muscles that are more on the top layer that run vertically so they run like this so like there's kind of like two points that are being stretched away from this rear shoulder so the rear shoulder kind of stays back or maybe rotates um, away just a little bit, but what's happening is length is being created between the back hip and the back shoulder and also the front hip and the front shoulder. And that is going to be used right here in the swing. So what you're going to see is as Bonds' swing begins, you're going to see those two lines are going to shorten. So like we've created a bunch of stretch and a bunch of length now, and as he starts to turn, you're gonna see those two things shrink. So whatever was long then becomes short. So when we look here, Bonds' right sho or left shoulder, excuse me, because he's left-handed, comes down and gets closer to his back hip. And you can see now as well that his chest and his belly button are aligned. So that tells us that his back shoulder has now got closer to his front hip as well. That's called the stretch and shortening cycle. And it kind of is just like a way that our body like behaves or really just like the way like tissues behave. So like when something stretches out a lot, it builds a bunch of potential energy. When you let it go, it shrinks. It's a stretch and a contraction. And that's something that Bonds does really well and something that most elite hitters do really, really well. Couple things that are a little bit less like nerdy and like the way the human body moves um, is look at how deep his barrel turns into the zone. So you're going to see that back here, you're going to see the catcher's mitt right there. And you're going to see the barrel turns into the way of the catcher's mitt. So we're in the way of the ball for a really long time, which gives us a lot of room to mess up. So when he turns his barrel deep like this and gets in the way of the pitch, that allows him to run into the pitch anywhere between really like right here, maybe one frame more than that. The video quality isn't great, so it probably is somewhere in between these two frames. But kind of like where I drew my line and out here. So this allows him to hit the ball anywhere between those two lines, so that way his timing doesn't have to be perfect. He has the ability to barrel the ball anywhere in that gap. A couple other things that we're gonna notice here is that he does a nice job of creating a negative spine angle. So when I draw a line here, through his head, through his front foot, you can see that's leaning back, okay? And what he's doing is when he rotates at that angle, it allows him to kind of come up behind the ball so we can get on plane effectively because the ball is coming down a little bit. So we want to swing up just a little bit. And when we're leaning back in this way, it allows us to do that in a way without 
feeling like we have to manipulate our bat to, to do that. We can kind of just turn our body and that happens. And it all sets up here with the stride. So you're going to see when Bonds moves into his front leg, into his landing of his front leg, you're going to see his belt line goes up. So you can see right there. So we'll sometimes call that avoiding the ground. Now, when we think about landing, I kind of want to try to stay away from the ground. So that front, so the front leg um, is de-weighted for as long as possible. And also, so the front side of that belt can stay up, which allows us to turn with our head back as we see bonds do so well here. Now, um, other hitting instructors like Teacher Man, for example, he would call this being one-legged. This isn't necessarily wrong. You know, I, we've used that term before or that phrase before as well. Um, but it's one of those things where um, when we talk about it, we usually are talking about the slant of the pelvis and trying to get that slant upward and keep it upward as we rotate. So that way it's a lot easier to see the ball and our head stays back. Now, one leg, being one leg and then using that verbiage does accomplish the same thing. But I find that when I say that, I end up getting people to just kind of stay right in this back leg and they don't actually slide that pelvis forward. So we think it's a little bit more anatomically correct to get the front side of the pelvis up and slide the hips forward during the stride phase to build energy during that turn. And the other thing that does is when that belt line goes up, is that it increases the distance between back shoulder and hip vertically. So like this distance gets longer and then I'll change colors here just to make it a little bit more clear and this distance gets shorter. Our body always has a short side and a long side and during the stride phase we want the front side of the body to get short and the back side of the body to get long and then when we start our swing we want that to flip really really quickly. The problem is a lot of hitters, when they do this, they'll drop their front shoulder way, way down like this. And when they go to make their turn happen, their head will move a ton. When that shoulder drops a lot, you can create a lot of force, but it's hard to create a lot of force at an object that's moving 100 miles an hour when your head moves that much. So what we want to do is we want to get the hip, the front hip, closer to the front shoulder before we begin our turn. So that way when and we want to do that, excuse me, we want to get the hip closer to the front shoulder by lifting up from the ground, not pulling down from what's above. So when we pull that front shoulder down, what ends up happening is the head moves a lot. But when we pull the hip up, what happens is we land with that pelvis a little bit slanted and allows us to keep our head back really effectively. So you can see there's a lot of things that, that Bonds does really well, and it makes sense because the dude hit a ridiculous amount of home runs and put up staggering numbers every year of his career, regardless of whether he did steroids or not. Um, you know, it's my belief he should probably be, you know, in the Hall of Fame considering it is a baseball museum. That said, um, I think that there's a lot that we can learn as hitters and as instructors by taking a look at his swing. So hope you guys enjoyed.